I'm Eric Holland. I'm the Curator of Education with the State Historical Society of North Dakota. One of the things that we do at the Historical Society is develop programs that you can have in your classroom or you can use as a group. And one of the ones that I'm going to talk with you about today is our teepee in a box. This is a plastic box that has a container for a model teepee and inside that box are diagrams that can help you understand different parts of program that could be taught or learned related to the teepee. If you don't know what a teepee looks like, here's a picture of one. A teepee is a dwelling or a house that was used by the Plains Indians. They were uh, very flexible structures. They could sit on ground that was level or not level because of the way they're built. And part of what you can learn from this teepee in a box is some of those dynamics of the structure. But what I'm going to do today is just unpack the box and help you see how the possibilities of what you could do relate to your classroom or your activity. Inside the box are a number of different teepee covers. This one has outlines of different hides that could have been sewn together to make a buffalo hide teepee. And you can see it would take a lot of work to sew and stitch together each buffalo hide into a structural piece that would look like that. Another one of the elements inside the box is a teepee with pins in it. You could see from that cover that I showed you before there were holes in the front and the way a teepee would be put together is pegs or pins would be put through as the cover is wrapped around the poles and I'll show you that in a moment. Some Indian groups decorated their teepees. Um, this one obviously has a uh, Horse culture related to it, so is after the 1700s when horses came to the Northern Plains. And this piece is a cutaway that you can see later we'll talk about how the wind works, uh, the breezes work to drag the smoke in and out of the teepee. So also in the box are teepee poles. And again, this scale is one inch to one foot. So imagine that if this is my one inch measurement, these are 12, 15 feet tall poles. And there are two in this bundle that are a little bit shorter. Those two are the smoke flap poles and we'll talk about those later. These are the primary foundation poles and will be used to hold the teepee up. Another major portion of teepee construction is a long rope that would be used to tie these bundles together. So that's also in the teepee in the box. And then there's a box in the box. And this box has some smaller parts that are also part of the program, like a door for your teepee and the sacred pole that's out in front of the teepee um, and some other things like that that you'll come across later. And then there's a very important part of this box, which is this board. And this board looks a little bit weird to you, because it's just a square with some holes in it, but there are dots. This is the center of where the teepee would be set up. That's where the fire would be. This is the east, or where the door would be. And these are starred, or marked areas, where after you have learned how to tie three poles together and create a tripod, you would set them in these three holes, swinging this one out this way, and then lay in the rest of the poles before you put your cover on. So the first step of setting a teepee for um, people on the Northern Plains that lived in three pole teepee structures. Um, the foundation for a teepee would either be a three pole or a four pole set and uh, you'll understand a little more as we move forward. To set a teepee up in a three pole set you need to start with a tripod. A tripod or three poles and those poles will be tied together on the ground
So we're talking about a three-pole teepee set and the, the first process that needs to happen with those poles is to tie three of them together and that'll um, be the basis for the tripod. These two poles are facing north and south and this pole which will eventually become the south side of the door or the south door pole is across it at the angle of the opening of the south side of the teepee. So I'm going to take these three poles and pick them up. And then I'm going to take about four feet of rope. So about four feet and tie what's called a clove hitch around these three poles. So I'm going underneath the the two main poles are, that are the north-south poles, crossing above that original, going under again, and through the loop that was created by that first rack. So you have a cross here that binds on the rope. A hitch is a special knot that is fastening rope to something. And so what I've really done is fastened this rope to these poles, effectively tying the poles together. So that's the first part of the knot. Now remember I said I had about four feet that I wanted to start with. I'm gonna take that four feet and wrap above my clove hitch all the way around. One wrap, two wraps, why would I use four wraps? The four directions or four uh, colors or other sacred fours that are part of Native American traditions. I was taught, when I was taught how to do this, that what I was doing with these four wraps is asking the four winds, the four directional winds, to help keep my teepee standing. So these four wraps are sort of a prayer or a request for supernatural support. Then what I do, I should have shown that, is tie a square knot in the long piece and the end of that four foot piece that I had. The square knot is the knot that you use to finalize that binding of the four wraps around the poles. And to tie a square knot, you take one end over the other and make a half hitch. And then you do that again, but the next time, if you see that this line comes from underneath and on top, and it stays on top of this line. So when I pull it up, it comes into a square. If you tie it the other way, the knot will slip on itself. And so you don't want to do that. You want it to be one left over right, and then right over left when you tie it. Okay. So, with the clove hitch, there's some tail end of the rope and some leading end of rope. The leading end then is wrapped around all three of the poles four different times. Three, four, and then tied to the tail end of that long rope with a square knot. Okay? <clears throat> now, to get the poles up in the air, I would hold the base of each pole with feet and pull on the rope. 
and what that does is lift the tripod up in the air. I'm going to fasten this pole in the ground so it doesn't slide, this pole in the ground so it doesn't slide, and that would be the way it would be in the real world. I've pulled these up in the air, and then you take the north, door, uh, north pole of the tripod and swing it out into a line that's almost straight north and south. And there's your tripod. Now we start setting other additional poles to fill out the rest of the structure. And when you put a pole in the ground, you put it in the top of the teepee, and then you place the next pole on top of the previous pole. The first pole that I'm going to put into this teepee is this one, which is on the north side of the door. Remember, east is where our doorway is. The pole that was of the tripod that's out on this end of the house is the south door pole. Here, this is the north door pole. Now you've got the door defined. The next pole goes next to that door pole and on top of the previous pole. And what that does is secures the pole before up at the top, sort of locks it into the bundle. And we will further lock it in just a moment. The next one goes further around the circle and on top of the previous pole. So they're all inside these rear two pole extensions of the tripod. Now, the next pole is on this side of the door and goes in and on top of the last pole. So that locks the bundle there. Next is next to it. Next. And now we have the front two-thirds of the structure built. Remember that this is your door, north wall, south wall, and the back wall hasn't been completed yet. So we have three poles left. I'm going to use one of those on the north side of the back, and it goes in right on top of the bundle, on top of the last pole, and then I'm going to put one on the south side of the back, and it goes in and on top of the bundle, and on top of the last pole. They have just crossed there. You'll notice that there's one hole left in the area of the ground. And that one will be used to lift the teepee cover. So let's move this out of the way a little bit and see that we have this single pole. And we have a flat teepee cover. It's a semicircle that's made out of many different buffalo hides sold together in real life. I would take the pole that I have left and attach the teepee cover to it just slightly above the base of the pole. Then I would pull the cover in the bundle in on both sides and I have this all in one place. Back to the rest of our teepee. All of this effort that I showed you on the table would be done out here. And so I would place the base of the pole in that hole and pull on the sides of the teepee cover and raise that structure up. Pull the canvas or cover around toward the door on both sides. And there's the shape of 